Right, to correspond and celebrate the uh, Apollo moon mission landings, I thought I'd come out and show you how to take a really easy picture of the moon. Um, now, just looking at my app, and there are several apps available and websites where you can check the data. Tonight, we have a waxing gibbous phase of the moon, and we can see the moon up there. And the phase of the moon is really important when you, when you choose to photograph it. Photographing a full moon isn't really the best time to do it. When you've got a half moon or a sort of quarter moon, you'll get some definition of uh, craters and mountains showing on the moon. So tonight's phase of the moon is a particularly good one, but there are other phases uh, that also work well. But as I say, a full moon isn't always the, the best one. Now, um, the technique for this is really quite simple. With modern day cameras, um, and a focal length of 400 millimeter or above, if you've got it, then you can actually get some really good shots. The reliability of getting good shots or the consistency of getting good shots depends on atmospheric conditions. Now we did have a clear sky a moment ago and we've got the moon up there at the moment in a dark sky, but we've had a bank of thin cloud, high cloud come over. So I'm just waiting for that to clear. Now, while I'm waiting for that to clear, let me explain the setup that I've got here and the settings that you'll need to capture a moon in this phase. So I have a 70 to 200 millimeter focal length lens on there. And of course, I've set it to 200 millimeter. I also am using my two times converter. So that's making this 200 millimeter lens into a 400 millimeter lens. Now this 200 millimeter lens is an f2.8 but with the two times converter, I lose a couple of stops of light, so it becomes an f5.6 lens. Now, at the moment, I've got the aperture set to f5.6, which is fully open to let as much light in, and I'm shooting at 200 ISO. At 200 ISO, with the f5.6 setting, I can get a shutter speed of 250th, 1 250th of a second, and that gives me the correct exposure when we have a clear sky. We've just got a quick clear bank there now, so just shooting that now. Now, that setting actually seems quite fast for a nighttime shot, but remember the moon is just reflecting sunlight, and the moon is quite a sort of powdery white colour, so it's reflecting a lot of light back. So when you have a clear sky, you can get away with that faster shutter speed. Now, if you have a smaller aperture lens, you can obviously reduce that shutter speed down, but I wouldn't go any less than a 30th of a second with a 400 millimeter lens. And the reason for that is that the moon is actually moving across the sky continuously. And it might not look like it's moving much, but when you look at it through a telephoto lens, you can actually see the movement and it won't take long until it's actually moved out of frame. So here I'm using my geared head which makes it a little bit easier for me to turn the camera, reposition the shot, and then recheck my position and my focus. Now, autofocus is a good option for this, but remember that if you've come from warm conditions to outside and it's colder, that your focus may shift a little bit and it's worth refocusing and rechecking. You'll also notice that I'm using a cable release to avoid any shake even though I'm shooting at 250th of a second. But one of the important factors that I've applied to the camera is I've gone into the menu and I've locked the mirror up. By locking the mirror up, we also reduce any further vibrations in the camera, again, reducing shake. So I'm doing everything I can to keep the camera as still as possible. Obviously, we need a tripod as well. Now, it may pay as well, if you've got uh, the shutter speed, like I said here, of 250th a second, and we know that's plenty fast enough, it may also pay to reduce your shutter speed down a stop to 125th, and then close the aperture down a stop so that you're working with better optics of the lens or the best optical quality of the lens. Right, there's a clear patch. I'm going to change my settings down a stop on the lens, and then take my shutter speed down to 125th on this one. So now I'm at f. Uh, 5.7, I was at 5.6, now I'm going to f8, still at 200 ISO, and let's have another look, let's check if the moon has moved, and it has a little bit, so I'm just using my geared head to move it over, getting my focus there checked, trying to lock the sh uh, shutter, uh, the mirror up, 
and then use my cable release to take the shot. Now, if the uh, mist has cleared, hopefully we would have got a reasonable shot there. And let's zoom, look at that. Look at that result there, beautiful. So you can see there, I can see the craters on the moon, right at the top there, the mountain range coming down here, and then further down some of the other stronger craters. And that's why this waxing gibbous stage or phase of the moon is a really good one because the light is coming from the side and therefore these deeper craters are casting shadows as is this mountain range here casting shadows and that gives us some definition to work with on the moon and as i said if we were shooting at a full moon then that wouldn't be uh, revealed that detail wouldn't be revealed so tonight is an absolute perfect night if uh, the cloud clears and we get clearer sky, we should even be able to improve on that shot a little further. Now, a couple of other things to mention is I'm actually just outside my own studio here. There's a field out here and you don't have to go far to shoot this because we're just looking up at the night sky. But it is worth considering where you're shooting from in terms of light pollution. If you're shooting in a city, then you might have a lot of glow coming up into the atmosphere from the city lights. So if you're a little bit more of a sort of urban area or sorry, uh, further away, suburban area or outside of a city, then you're going to have less light pollution and you should get a blacker sky. Other things to consider, again, just make sure your lenses are clean, that they haven't missed it up with condensation and using a lens hood can actually help protect from condensation forming. So this is the image that I captured on the night and you can see the data settings on the right hand side. This is an image I captured on a different night with a longer focal length lens. I think it was about a 1000 or 1200 millimeter lens. And this one was captured uh, previously some years ago, again on maybe an 800 millimeter or a thousand millimeter lens. However, the exposure settings would be very similar. We have some great information on our blog, which is carltaylereducation.com forward slash blog. One on how to undertake moon photography and two on the science and challenges of moon photography on the Apollo moon missions.